uh, here we are again. It's uh, Wednesday, and you'll maybe see this Thursday, however they do it. Um, we're doing okay, Mary and I. We're, uh, we're working around the house. Actually, we cleaned the garage yesterday. <laughs> I said to Mary, I'm going to clean the garage. And she said, oh, I want to help. So we scraped some paint and swept some floors. It's weird. Um, Easter morning, I had the treat of my life. I took the car and went around the perimeter highway. I bet there weren't 40 cars. Six in the morning, I saw the sun rise to the east <laughs> in the car around Memorial Drive. It was fantastic. I recommend it, but you know, you'll never see the perimeter so empty. The harder thing about all this for me is that uh, if you're a personality like my own, you feed on audiences. You get a response. You see faces. I mean, I know some churches put faces of people in the empty seats. <clears throat> it's a little much. But you're talking to people. All I see is myself right there. That's me looking back at me, and it's kind of strange. Um, so I was thinking about happiness. Uh, the last time I thought seriously about happiness uh, was about 2012. Then it was estimated that 66% of the American people thought happiness was the goal of their life. But at the same time, they said that they hadn't achieved it. So I thought, you know, our happiness is sometimes tried at times like this. Anxiety is obviously a familiar emotion today. My wife, Mary, has lost her business. She's a travel agent. She gets commissions when people travel. They're not traveling. They can't travel. They shouldn't travel. Planes are 10% occupied. So um, of, of the 11 wage earners in our extended family, six have been furloughed. And the economy will not start up with a bang. Of course it won't. So uh, it'll be a struggle a bit for a while. Uh, I may have told you the story a long time ago of the little girl, the young girl, who's, uh, to who visited her brother in prison. And um, we did the wedding at Holy Innocence. And uh, there, it was a congregation of mixed color people of color, and that's an active audience. And so if you go out and say good morning, you get a response right away. If you say something in the sermon, say it, say it, say it. Oh, it's incredible. I told you a computer is awful. Anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit about happiness, what it is and what it isn't. Um, Abraham Lincoln once said that we were as happy as we wanted to be. I don't know. We know it can't be pleasure because pleasure is transitory as powerful as it is. We know it can't be emotional. Um, emotions are fleeting. A lot of what we think is happiness is biochemical. It's a physical response, a chemical response, a brain response to a stimulus that is transitory. We know it can't exist on circumstances. It really can't. There's an incredible moment in that when the lottery was uh, finally approved by, uh, by amendment in the state constitution. I don't know, early 90s, perhaps it was. I remember the first lottery drawing had five people. They, they, I mean, a lot of people signed up, but five people were chosen by lot. And they were going to divide up money. Uh, first number, first guy was 10,000, 5,000, 10,000, I think 25,000, 50,000, and 100,000. And I remember them lining up, and the first number called, the little ball came down, was the guy who got the least. And I remember the guy got 10 grand, and he was unhappy. He was choking back tears because the next numbers went up and some guy got 100000 If I gave that man $10,000 flat out, he'd be ecstatic, wouldn't he? But uh, something happened along the way. 
I guess it was the comparison. Um, I could have got more. The discontent that happens. And so uh, happiness is a strange, elusive thing. We use the word all over the place. And I don't know what we're talking about half the time. People are spending a lot of money to be happy. They want to. Mary uh, often sometimes sends clients to Canyon Ranch. Yeah, I think it's in California, Arizona, maybe I forget. But Dan Baker is the uh, psychiatrist or the psychologist, and Cameron Smith is also there. And uh, they've written a book called What Happy People Know, uh, The Science, The New Science of Happiness. And I've read it, and it's one of the great books that I've read. It's not a how-to book, but it tells you what happiness is and what it isn't. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Um, and there's a way to get at it. There's a way to get at it. I have uh, four saints in my life. Uh, they're not the saints you might think of instinctively. Uh, they're Y.A. Tittle, who played quarterback for the New York Giants. At the end of his career, he played in 1961, 62, 63. Uh, Michael J. Fox, diagnosed with Parkinson's. And he wrote a book called Lucky Man. Nancy Beers uh, wrote a book, Waist High in the World, A Life Among the Non-Disabled with muscular, uh, uh, muscular sclerosis. And then uh, one, one pivotal book for me, uh, Philip Simmons, Learning to Fall, The Blessings of an Imperfect Life with Lou Gehrig's disease at the age of 32. And these are kind of saints for me, and I've devoured those books because I've always had, I've always had the belief that um, uh, that there's an awful grace of God, um, and that life is hard, life is difficult, life is difficult, more than non-difficult, I think. So, what is happiness, honest to John? What is happiness? Uh, it's not an emotion. It's not a personality trait. Oh, he's a happy guy. Well, wait, 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 you have to be careful saying this because the funniest man I've ever known was Robin Williams. He made the world laugh. He was a disciple of uh, Jonathan Winters. He made the world laugh. The way they held their face, the way they made observations about things. They could make, he went to the improv of Robin Williams. That's where he practiced after his gigs. This frenetically driven man would go to the improv in L.A. and he'd talk, he'd do more. People shout out topics. Terrorism on an airplane. Would you like armed or unarmed? I mean, he just made made jokes of everything, and yet his internal life was was um, less than happy. I guess. So we know it can't be. We know it can't be a personality trait, and happy people don't tell jokes, not necessarily. I think humor today is a sign of our unhappiness. Late night TV is often very weaponized. Um, the humor has passed, passed on from just being laughing at yourself to laughing at other people. It isn't really having a sense of humor. Some of the poorest people are happy. You've got to be careful of that, too. You know, shoe fly pie and apple pan dowdy. But in Haiti, I have met some of the happiest people in the world, some of them, who suffer things that would crush me. So, um, Dan Baker and, and Cameron Smith believe this about life. The shortest duration of time, measurement of time, we call a second. You know, I've been doing this for six minutes, 50, six, 
minutes, 56 seconds. I'll be with you in a second. The English have a phrase, I'll be with you in a tick. But that's not the shortest duration of time that's measured. Both uh, Baker and Smith believe that there is a quarter second. A quarter of a second where all the decisions of life are made. I know it takes us a long time to make a decision. Should I go? Should I not go? Should I marry? Shouldn't I marry? Oh, I gotta well, what we're doing is wait, waiting for ourselves to tell ourselves we've made a decision. Can you make a decision very quickly? And you make it in a quarter of a second. And they can demonstrate it. I think the most difficult thing in, for me in sports is hitting a baseball. Sports are all complicated. Team sports are complicated. Golf is complicated. Basketball is complicated. You got to compute para parables, parabolas to put the ball in the basket, to connect the pass to the receiver, all of that. But hand eye coordination, hitting a baseball. A pitcher stands 60 feet from home plate. A woman playing softball, collegiate softball, what, 45 feet? The ball gets from the college woman's hand to the catcher in a second. The ball gets from the major league pitcher who pitches 90 miles an hour to the catcher in a second. And within that second, the batter has to do four things, at least. The batter has to decide, is it hittable? Should I hit it? Will I hit it? And then get body, mind, brain, muscles, nerves, all moving toward the fulfillment of that act. So we know that there is a duration of time called the quarter second, and Cameron Smith and Dan Baker believe that that is where happiness lives. Right there. You've got to work on the quarter second. You know, Scrooge never worked on this quarter second. You'll want the whole day tomorrow, I suppose, if quite convenient, sir. Well, it's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I knocked you half a day's wages, you'd feel yourself ill-used. But you don't think I'm ill-used to pay for a day's wages without work. Well, I suppose you ought to have the whole day, but be here all day earlier the next day. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas. You, Clark, on 15 shillings a week. Oh, I'm getting tired of it. Anyway, how mean is that? Where does that come from? It comes from the quarter second rule. Therefore, you've got to work on the quarter second. And how do you do it? You do it by appreciation. Because appreciation is a virtue of the soul that can have no other companion if the companion is anxiety or apprehension. So appreciation lives alone. It is the value of others and the self-value. It's basically loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. If you have appreciation, you can have a choice. When you make a choice, you have power. When you make a power, you have, uh, you have strength. When you have strength, you can express it. It's really very interesting. So what? how do you get at the quarter? You've got to be able to domesticate that. You've got to be able to domesticate that. You've got to be able to make that work for your, in your favor. So you're not just nasty. You have to make it, and you do it first by appreciation. The five things I appreciate about you, the person, the job, and and you do it not just some five things. The, the things I appreciate about Mary, I can I can give you five, I can give you ten, I can give you fifteen. The things I appreciate about Bill Murray, well let's try. He he's compassionate, he's dedicated He's organized, he doesn't take himself too seriously, and he cares for what he does. I mean, those are so simple. I could say it about Buddy, Kenya, and everybody. What about the people I don't like? <laughs> the five things I appreciate about Donald Trump. 
I'd be here all day. But I have to work on that. You see the point? Because if appreciation gets to the quarter second, if the mind and whole soul are trained to get to the quarter second, by the time the ball has left the pitcher's hand, should I, will I, can I, yes. Even hitting into a double play, by the way, is a feat of great skill. Because you've had to hit the ball. That's going 91 miles an hour and curving away. And we, as spectators, say, oh, a double play, you idiot. But what a feat he has already performed. So I'm going to talk about appreciation next time, all right? Uh, loving yourself, basically. We are as happy, Abraham Lincoln said, we're as happy as we want to be. He was probably right. Uh, be a good cheer. <laughs>